Qualcomm in its recent keynote announced few of the chips for the upcoming Copilot PCs, X2 Elite and X2 Elite Extreme. X2 Elite has two variants. There's the base chip with 12 cores, operating frequency of 4 GHz along with 4.4 GHz of dual core boost frequency and 4.7 GHz of single core boost frequency. Half a dozen cores are performance cores, while the other six cores are efficiency cores. Qualcomm calls them prime cores, which is stupid. Just call them efficiency cores. Performance cores operate at 3.4 GHz and finally the cache is 34 MB in total. The higher end variant of X2 Elite comes with 18 cores of which 12 cores are efficiency cores and the 6 are performance cores. The efficiency cores can boost up to 4.7 GHz both in single and multi-core while the performance cores operate at 3.4 GHz. The total cache is a whopping 53 MB. The integrated GPU gets a performance and efficiency boost as well, clogging in at 1.7 GHz while getting support for DirectX 12.2 Ultimate, Vulkan 1.4 and OpenCL 3.0. The biggest upgrade however is the NPU. We've gone from 45 trillion operations per second to 85 trillion operations per second. Holy sh**. This is a godsend for local AI processing. I can imagine an open source solution down the line where we can just disable any of the online services running regarding AI and completely process everything offline. That would be an actual use case of the NPU instead of just shoving trillions of specifications up our surveilled, tired, poor little ass. The maximum RAM capacity is now 128 gigabytes. In addition, we've got dual PCIe 5.0 support, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and X75 5G modem. Kind of a bummer they didn't include Bluetooth 6.0 and while the modem is new, the transfer speeds remain the same. Qualcomm says X2 Elite is 31% faster while using 43% less power. If their claims are true, the battery lives for the machines are gonna be legendary. You know, these specs aren't meaningful if we don't include architecture for context. So, what's the architecture? We've seen big little architecture from ARM a long time ago. Other process manufacturers have their own implementations. It's when you put low to medium demanding workloads to efficiency cores while the performance cores take care of the rest. Qualcomm calls their efficiency cores prime cores, but this iteration they did something different. Last year, Elite X1 had 12 cores and all of those cores were performance cores. Those cores could do dual core boost of up to 4 GHz while having 42 MB of total cache. X2, however, is built on a smaller 3 nanometer process and includes prime cores as the majority. These prime cores can hit boosted frequencies while the performance cores can't. I think these chips will prioritize prime cores even for heavier workloads. When they can't handle the workload, they'll boost to their max frequency to complete the task. For anything that is more demanding and most importantly, longer sustaining, the performance cores will kick in because prime cores can only sustain their boosted frequency for a limited time. The change is very subtle but extremely significant. If the efficiency cores can get the job done for everything and performance cores can take care of the rest, we're gonna see massive performance and efficiency gains. You're essentially completing power-hungry, demanding workloads while consuming less power. But we're gonna have to wait for the actual reviews and benchmarks. That's it for the Elite X2. Qualcomm's top flagship, however, is the Elite X2 Extreme Supreme Premium Limited Edition, which is slated to launch in a few months. We're looking at 18 cores, 12 of which are prime cores able to hit a boosted frequency of 4.4 GHz. Two of these cores are able to hit a whopping 5 GHz. Holy sh again. It can support more than 128 GB of RAM and comes with 192-bit memory bandwidth. Specs-wise, it's pretty impressive. Recently, some of the Cinebench results were revealed and the Extreme beats Apple M4 and M4 Pro, but not M4 Max. It actually loses slightly. Single core gain was around 10% while multi-core gain was around 3%. I was pretty happy with the results, but then Apple being Apple quietly dropped their M5. Again, we're gonna have to wait for the actual benchmarks and comparisons, but looking at the very preliminary numbers, the Elite Extreme falls behind in the single core department while beating Apple's M5 in the multi-core department. M5 upgrade is not that significant in terms of CPU over M4. The real specs bump lies in the GPU performance, which blows M4 out of the water. So. 
that was all the chips. But what about the actual emulation of x86? What about the Prism emulation layer? What about the state of the ports on ARM? Well, ever since its debut, Prism has been receiving regular incremental updates. Nothing major, but they did keep it active. That is, until October 2025. The most beefed up update was recently revealed, containing the much needed instruction sets implementation. That's right gamers, ARM users can now use AVX and AVX2 instruction sets. It means more games, better emulation and processing hungry apps can now run, albeit with a varying level of performance. It's a huge step in the right direction. In terms of native ARM software, we don't have any elaborate metrics, but ARM did recently state in their blog that over 90% of the time spent by Windows users was spent in native ARM apps. While I do understand that ARM on PC's market share is puny, this is huge news. Linux, Adobe, Google, emulator devs, and so many others are already embracing ARM by porting their apps over. I said in 2024 that even if Qualcomm comes with iterative upgrades, I'll be fine with that. These new chips are anything but. It's a very exciting time for ARM and we're long overdue to take advantage of this architecture on consumer grade PCs. I just hope that they can tone down the NPU and AI in their marketing and focus on just performance and efficiency. These elite PCs will launch in early 2026, but if you've already got the previous generation, I wouldn't recommend upgrading. I think we're pretty much set in terms of the hardware. The gains need to be replicated across software as well. Imagine having an AI powered compiler that can convert and compile ARM apps from x86 apps or an emulation layer that is highly performance oriented. I'll see you when they launch. But for now, please like and subscribe for more tech because... Oh really? What did he say? What was the last thing he said? I just blew myself. He said some wonderful things. This is Rogue Hat. Catch you guys. Later.